Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be telling you the ugly truth about return pallets and what you expect to get from them. Are they actually worth getting? Do you make a lot of money from it or do you actually lose money? So if you are interested in this video and excited to hear what I got to say, please hit that thumbs button. If you are new, please subscribe and comment down below any experiences you've had with return pallets, if you like them or not. If you are new to my channel and you don't know what I do, I resell stuff from charity shops, uh, from car boots, from online, but I also deal with return pallets. Uh, I've had, had probably about six or seven return pallets, all different sorts from electrical to Christmas stuff to toys, uh, from tools um just to see what sells and what not um but along the way i have found out there was quite a lot of things you really need to know before you're thinking about doing it yourself if you've never done one this is the video for you because there is a lot of things you really need to think about before you are actually thinking about buying a returns palette and this video is going to tell you everything about it and at the end of the video it's totally up to you. If you don't know what returns palette is, it's basically what is from shops, online retailers, like your Verys, like your Argus's, like your John Lewis's. It can be anywhere. It can be from any shop or retailer. And what they do is when they have a return, basically something that's broke or faulty or the customer doesn't like it, they don't fix it, they don't put it back on the shelf and reduce the price. It's too much effort for them. They just pull it on a pallet and then they send these pallets or sell the pallets to companies from where I get. I get mine from Gems, but there is other ones where you can go on auctions and bid for them. Um, and they obviously then sell them to yourself and then you basically get a pallet and see what's on it. That is it. Um, obviously, certain pallets are better than others like like i say argos is pretty much sells everything but if you get like a john lewis one you're gonna get a bit more higher end products you know because john lewis is a bit more posh i would say than um argos you know and but you can get any sorts of pallets you know you, you it, it's not just certain companies you know certain shops um it's it can be a wide range it can actually be shops it can be jewelry it can be anything it can be so when you are going on these sites look for the things you do want to sell or do what i did and just go for ones you fancy when you're buying a palette you gotta really think about your budget and what you want to spend you know a lot of the a lot of these palettes are expensive gems is quite good because it tells you straight up how much the thing is how much it is for shipping and then you get it other places are online auctions where you're just bidding, which is great because you could actually get something cheaper. Um, but a lot of times, if it's got some stuff on that's quite popular or can sell very well, it's going to go for a lot of money. Obviously, with all these pallets, they are returned. So you've got to be careful. It is a very risky business. You've got to research on what things you are buying and... Are they potentially risky to buy? So if you're looking at a homeware, one where it's full of ceramics, electrical maybe, you've got a good chance that a lot of them could be chipped, broken, smashed, and you could just get a pallet full of broken stuff that you can't even sell. You've really got to be careful on what you buy because you can't take it back. You can't ask for a refund. What you buy is sold as seen. It tells you on their rules and regulations um, on the site. So before you even think about uh, trying to get a refund on any of the things you've bought, because it may be half of it's broke or the most expensive things don't work or parts are missing, you can't. What you get is what you're given and you got to lump it or like it. Or, you know, sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And this video, I'm going to be telling you what my experience is on what I think. And at the end of this video, I will tell you actually if it is worth it. 
um, because there is some really downsides of a palette um, and it needs to be addressed. You do see a lot of people um, on YouTube promoting these palettes like it's the best thing ever. Oh, I've spent 300 and something pound and I've made 4,000 pound. It's a load of rubbish. Most of these people who are doing that, I've got big following on YouTube. So they're really getting a lot of views and making a lot of money off YouTube for these views. So the palettes are pretty much just, I would say like an advertisement for them. If anybody like myself, who I don't get paid for YouTube, um, I don't get sponsored by anybody. If you're like that and you talk to anybody like that, they will probably say going to be agreeing with what I'm going to be saying in this video. So when you've ordered the palette, you will always have to pay a shipping fee. Usually shipping fees can cost anything from £45 to £100, depending on the person who is selling them. Um, auction ones can also be more expensive. They can put the VAT because it's an auction. They can put VAT on and they put shipping pricing on and it actually works out a lot more so you've just got to make sure when you're on an auction and you think you've got a pallet for 300 pound it's probably going to end up being more like 500 pound because after the shipping and the vat yeah it's gonna it adds up so just be aware of the uh, auction sites so what you need to do before you even buy a pallet you need to do the checklist um, most pallets what you do see will have a checklist and it tells you exactly what is on the actual palette some things might not be on there some things you might get a few extra things some things you might not actually get but mainly nine times out of ten you get mainly everything that's like this says on the palette you sometimes you get a few extras sometimes you might get something similar which is described on there but you don't get that i usually do is i check out what is on there i see the price of what it's selling for um and then top down the actual retail price of what you can get a lot of these sites put a uh, recommended retail price on shops and you've got to remember they will put on the highest price because they then calculate it out to a, a rough estimate of, of a price what they're going to sell the pallet for of course they're not going to go and shop around seeing what prices are the cheapest so for instance if you see something that's a lego look for instance i got a bowser lego which is retailing at 229 pound um which it wasn't at the time I bought it. It was before Christmas, but then it's retailing for 170 something pound. So unless it was brand, brand new, I'm very, very doubt it. I'm going to get anywhere near that 170 price because one, I'm selling it second hand, even though it's new, the buyer has got no proof of like purchase. You know, they haven't got like a, unless you sell it on eBay. So they've got no receipt, you know, and why would you, buy something from a person when you can just go to a shop and uh, get it absolutely spanking brand new so you also got to think about the realistic prices you're going to do so that's why i always go on ebay uh check out what are the prices are what it's sold for so for instance my bowser lego was selling for about 150 so i knew i could sell it for about 150 but obviously the people who i got the pay from were saying it was a 229 pound because obviously it bumps up their uh, the price list. If it was £170, then the pallet would have been cheaper. And they don't want to do that because they want to make as much money as possible. So check out every single item on there and work out how much you could get from sold items. So don't even think about how much you could get because you see it on the shop. You're not going to get nowhere near the shop price. It is Im impossible to get shop prices. Just go on pre-owned and then go on sold on eBay and then you'll see how much you can sell it for on eBay or anywhere like Vinted or in, in personal, you know, and that is the price you will be able to sell it for. So you've ordered it, you've got the palette and you're really excited and you're thinking, yes, this is the best thing ever. I'm going to, I'm, I've got like £2,000 worth of stuff and I've only paid like £400. Uh, no, like I said before, that is the recommended retail price. You haven't got £2,000 worth of products on there because that is retail recommended price. Brand new 
from a shop. These are returns. So one, they could be broken. Two, they could be missing things. Three, they could not even be there. Four, they could be faulty, damaged. Name it what you like. Loads of things could be wrong with them. Uh, but if you're very lucky, you could have one or two bad things and the rest could be really good. So don't get your hopes up straight away when you see things uh, because until you've unwrapped it, then start getting your hopes. Obviously, go and take a look at my video. I was very happy about my last palette because I had three things from Lego, uh, which are all worth over £100. And I had some other really big items. And I, I only had to sell like four things and I, I was in profit. So, you know, then it's worth it. But I, I don't know how I got that palette, palette for so cheap. I mean, it was it was it was really cheap. I only spent £400 on the palette itself. You know, and the Lego things, you know, paid for the palette. So you do get things good sometimes, but you really got to... I remember you are bidding against other people. So if you see somebody, you got to get straight in there if you see a palette because it will, it will go like that. So you got this palette... You're unwrapping it and you see things that you're like all in good condition and it looks fine. Great. Things that are broke, check them out. Some things might not even be broke. Like I said, if you go to somewhere like it's got a John Lewis uh, palette, they can't be bothered with like, like trying to work it out. If it's too complicated, they'll just send it back. If it's got a scratch on it or a little dent or in the box they don't want it lego is a great example of this because lego people who buy lego for that price are either one just buying it because they want to build it or most of the time are collectors so they want a pristine box any little dent scratch on the box they'll send it back because they don't want it on their collection they want to build the actual model and then display the box behind the actual model they've made so you're going to get, if you get a Lego, most of the time it's going to be a damaged box and it's not been made. Out the one I did um, recently, both my Bowser and the Doctor Strange one were absolutely in brilliant condition. I mean, the boxes were not too bad, but they had a little bit of damage. To a normal person, it doesn't matter. But to a collector, it does. You know, the helicopter, I, I haven't even sold it yet. It's got like, bits missing but you can get bits from like lego they will send you parts or you can go online and you can buy bits so lego is probably one of the safest things you can always make your money back on lego it's great lego is one of the finds of a palette um but with other things you just gotta see if you can figure it out it's maybe it's missing a part you know if it's like well-known toy company they can send you the parts you can buy a part you might find it online and don't get disheartened if you find something where it, it needs four wheels and you only got uh three wheels you could probably find the wheel um and sell it for you know pre-owned good price i've got it i've had a dyno truck it came and it had no wheels it had half of it missing and somebody will send it back you know and i couldn't i can't i can't sell it because it would it's basically to replace all them parts you might as well buy a new one so also i've bought tools which some of them are absolutely perfect nothing wrong with them they just don't know how to use them and then i've bought ones where traders have bought them obviously on a site probably they're there for the week their tools broke so they've gone to argos bought one absolutely bashed it used it to its death Took it back to Argus saying it doesn't work, it's broke. And of course, in their 28 day warranty, they can't say nothing about it. And literally, I have seen ones and it's got cement all over it. It's, it is knackered. The battery is not working because it's burnt out. And some of them, you really don't realise some people have got some cheek to do that. I mean, I, I, I couldn't do that. Um. So yeah, you've just got to you just got to go through the palette, and then what I do is I write down, print out the list of what the the products was coming, and I tick 
it's there and then i put an okay or damaged or totally you know broken and you can't fix it then i point all that down and then you're there selling it that's what i mean sell it on ebay uh vinted is another good one because you don't get commissioned you don't you don't have to pay no fees but only you only can sell certain things vinted also people on there do not um sell stuff or buy stuff for much you know unless it's lego lego always seems to sell quite well on there but uh ebay you're going to get a more higher premium on your stuff but obviously then the fees come off um in all are pallets worth getting are they worth these return pallets are they worth getting personally myself i started out in pallets and uh, buying them and i spent about two thousand pound probably in pallets i have not seen that two thousand pound back and that is the honest truth pallets are not worth buying you might get the odd good one like i did last time but it's like betting i would say it's like yeah it's very similar to betting you might win a hundred pound on a bet but then you think you're going to win every single time and you don't and then end up losing more money than you won in the first time and that's what a pallet is like return pallets are very very risky extremely risky so do your research Pallets, I would say that sell the best are depending on what time of the year. Obviously, toy pallets around Christmas are they are very good. You will sell everything on there as long as the stuff's good. But you, it's all about that risk. You know, I wouldn't spend more than four hundred pound on a pallet because it's just not worth it. I spent a, I spent almost eight hundred pound on the, the tools pallet. Because I know tools sell for a lot of money. And these wasn't even really good tools, you know, you know, not really expensive tools. Um and yeah. Not much from that palette is a profit. I haven't really got a profit. I've got two things which I'm waiting for the summer, which I've got two like harsher lawmos, and they were absolutely brand new. So they're for like three hundred pound each. So if I can sell them for two hundred pound each, um, two fifty, then I'll I will eventually make my money. You know, I'll, I'll probably make a hundred pound back on profit, and that's what I've, I've got to tell you. If you want to try and do this as a business, nah, do not bother with pallets. They you will not make money for what you spend on them. You do not get anywhere near what you would make. It's it's absolutely really really impossible i would say very impossible and i haven't been doing this long but i know i've done enough pallets now to say it's not worth it reason being you do not know what you're going to get in the pallet in like quality you know like is it going to be broke or not and that is a massive factor um but would i suggest trying it yeah i would if you do your research and get something that potentially you might like yourself so for instance if you do like lego like i got uh, and you see a bowser a doctor strange and a um, technics lego helicopter you're looking about four four fifty in just lego there if you wanted to buy it yourself the palette would not even that much to buy so you you would think well i like lego i want to build i like building lego so yes buy it then and then you could keep them yourself and just sell the other stuff um and it's just a bit of bonus extra money and then sell the lego after and you basically paid for free lego which is a bonus for a business no unless you're wanting to earn maybe 200 pound for the month um on a pallet then yeah obviously if you've got a lot of money and you want to waste a lot of money then yes you could go and buy like five or six pallets in a week but then you've also got to think about it putting them online selling them um sorting them all out taking pictures doing all this 
is it really worth it paying that much you know spending four maybe five thousand pounds on a load of items that could be broke you got no guarantee and that's the the biggest downside of return pallets certain pallets are a lot better than others you know like i said do your research you if after time you will realize which pallets are better than others you know electricals very hit and miss um toys very hit and miss especially around different seasons and what's on it and if you do look at pallets they do try to sell a lot of the same things on the pallets so scooters are always on pallets scooters are absolutely impossible to sell and they they'll put you a an electric scooter on there which is worth 200 pounds no one buys them you know yes they do sell but half the time they're either broke or the battery doesn't charge and that's a big lump out of your profit straight away plus they're illegal you're not even allowed to sell them well buy them you know or use them you're not allowed to but people still do um lego brilliant yeah if you find a lego palette which you will never find a lego palette but if you see something with about four or five pieces of lego on it and you're looking about 400 pound buy it because the lego will pay for your palette and then everything else will be pure profit so do that um electrical in like homeware and all that stuff it's quite good because if you get some decent stuff like i got a hotel chocolate um machine it's worth a hundred pounds i sold it for 70 so that's a very good profit and it's immaculate there was nothing wrong with it so yeah i'll give it a go but personally if you're looking to make a lot of money it's a waste of time you know it's better just going around the charity shops going around car boots picking up stuff for a quid and then sell them for 30 quid that's what i do and i've made a lot more money from buying from charity shops buying from car boots that way and also when you buy stuff from charity shops you give giving to charity as well so even though you're selling stuff on you you're helping the charity you're buying it from um, and you're finding what sells more than others you know so let me know what you think tell me your experiences um on your return palettes did you have a good return palette once or did you have a terrible return palette let me know in the comments and obviously if you are interested in buying anything from my eBay shop, the link is in the description. I've got some cool stuff on there and I will see you next time with another video. Goodbye.